Did, did you listen to Jeff, Jeff and, and Professor Hemo in the morning? morning? Here's what you know. Now we have Honorable Gladys Boss Sholay, mm -hmm. member of Bossy. Parliament in Wasingishu. Mm. Yes, and also the Jefferson Committee on Delegated Legislation. Wow. Yes. Karibu. Mm. The, the boss. The bossy. <laughs> very, very bossy. title. It's going to be a bossy. Thank you for making time for us this morning, Mochimua. Mm. And this, I know you're in mourning, but you made mm. time to come. Yes. How do you remember? Honorable Joyce Laboso, because I know you interacted with her. Yes. Yeah, first, my deepest condolences to the family and children of Joyce Laboso mm. and the people of Bomet at large, and specifically Sotik, her home, and the people of Nyamira, also where she is, uh, is a matrimonial home. Mm. I think uh, Joyce was an amazing woman. You cannot begin to describe her. She, was, she had strength in every angle and every sector. And uh, I always remember. Uh, when uh, when I, I remember when I told her I don't want to go into politics, you know, and then she said, it's okay. Then she, I said, and I said, no, I'm not. She said, okay, suppose you wanted to go into politics. What would you do? Which seat would you go for? Yeah. I said, no, I told you I don't want to go into politics. <laughs> Gladys, let's just assume yeah, you I are, know. which one it would be. And she kept pressuring me. We were sitting on the plane together. Yeah. And then so she was in, and then, but also in my whole life, what I always did is every position I am in, every time I grew, there would be somebody I would look up to. Yeah. There'd be someone who would become my inspiration and someone that I watch. I see how they behave, how they carry themselves, and I, that's my way of learning from others. Without even telling them that yeah. I'm learning from them, although I did tell Joyce <laughs> that. And uh, I would watch Joyce. And if you looked at her in terms of being a woman politician, yeah. she's all inspired me because she showed me you can be a technocrat, yeah. an academic, yes. a poli and then still be and a politician. A yes. the and then scene. you become a politician, but you don't talk like the other politicians. Ah. If you listen to the way she spoke, she spoke with so calm, very factually, yeah. And was not the the type who is trying to whip crowds. Yeah. The crowds themselves would whip themselves up for her. <laughs> but she wasn't um, that, you know, those politicians who know how to arouse yeah. the crowd. Yeah. She wasn't that type. She was calm. She explains things factually. And sometimes, every time when I remind myself, I tell myself, you can go into politics because you don't have to to be like the other politicians. Yes. Just be who you are. Mm -hmm. So Joyce th taught me that. She also taught me how to be a wonderful sister. Yeah. Uh, she, when her sister died, she raised her sister's children. Um, and she basically uh, was also a wonderful daughter because when her parents were not able, she stood in for the family. Yeah. She was also a leader of her family. Yeah. So in that, she, you also have le a lesson to learn about being a sister and being a daughter. Yeah. I mean, if you look, she also broke barriers. When we talk about our country, um, she married someone from Luo Nyanza, yeah. and, but she still came home and reigned. And despite everyone insulting her yes. and, and her opponents insulting her and telling her, Kwenda uko go and run in, yeah, in Luo Nyanza, yeah. yeah. go to Kisumu. That's yeah. what I used to tell her. Yeah. And she, she never responded to them. She simply said, I've just come to ask you if I can work for you. Yeah. You tell, if you want to give me the opportunity, I shall appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. So she's, she's had that calm demeanor of being able to deal with it. And uh, I think she, and I, and, and I think that's credit you must give to the people of... Uh, of Bomet, Bomet. Bomet. Yes. because they did stand with her and they said we will give her an opportunity to work for us yeah. even though we know traditionally what they say you've gone elsewhere yes. Yes. so yeah, yes, yes. So I think uh, to put it this way is yeah. Joyce was one of our finest yeah. for me I was so pained and at some point I said Lord there were so many of us you could choose from that I mean Joyce we needed Joyce to stay alive we needed Joyce out there because She's, she's the one who's going to inspire my daughter, yeah. you know, and all our other girls. Mm. And, uh, and, and it was sad. But did you see her through the trying time? Yes, I did manage, but we, she was under a glass yeah. uh, ceiling at that time. Yeah. And, and uh, some, we wouldn't be allowed to go to near her because her. So there were times she had ups and downs, yeah. but it was very quick. I mean, within a couple of months and, and uh, it was gone. Yeah. But I know that um, as women, um, members of parliament, yeah. What happened is that, because of course we need not everyone can go to the hospital, yeah. but there were certain designated women who mm -hmm. would go, and they would always give us the update. There was Honorable Conness, yeah. who's from her neighborhood in, uh, in, in, uh, in the South Rift. Yeah. There was Florence Bore, who's another woman representative for Bomet. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, there was Jaldeza, who's Rehema Jaldeza, who yeah. a member for Isiolo, yeah. who had always who knew her even before we came into parliament. Yeah. So what did happen was that uh, those women kept letting us know. I know on and Friday, I know on Friday when we were in Eldoret for a function, and I had about we were there with about twenty five women members. We went into a panic because someone said, said that they think she's gone. And, uh, and at that time, immediately we said, who will leave for Nairobi immediately from among us? Mm -hmm. And at that time, we were trying to start now making arrangements for Honorable Cornes and a few others to travel back. Yeah. But luckily for us, uh, Joyce, Honorable Joyce, uh, uh, Bomet Woman Representative, was, on, was in Nairobi yeah. and was on her way to her. She told us, no, I've just come from the hospital. Yeah. And she's fine. She's but um, what had happened is we do appreciate the family because they were very forthright with us, and yeah. the doctor and they said that the doctors had informed them that um, it's coming to an end. And uh, and so, even though we'd been prepared for it, yeah, it I think you. It's just the fine yesterday, the finality of it all. It's like it dawns on me. Yeah, it dawns on me. And for me, and which means it's the same thing with the entire country. People are saying many people are suffering, mm -hmm. many women and many men out there yeah. are suffering. In mm -hmm. the 2018, only 32,987 mm -hmm. people died. Mm -hmm. Now we have 47,887 new cases yeah. of cancer. Yes. How do we deal? with this crisis? I think this this should be a wake-up call. I told people, the people that we are listing down, I saw in the newspapers, they listed down uh, certain members of parliament, governors, and people who are well-known, yeah. who have died of cancer. Mm -hmm. But I was telling people, that is just uh, tells you yes. how many people in Mashinani yeah. are dying of cancer. And I know today, every time I'm told about helping out with a bill in the village, yeah. or helping out with a funeral, I ask what happened. It's cancer, cancer, yes. cancer. Before you'd hear about accidents. Yes. Yeah. These days, you don't hear, it's not accidents anymore. It's cancer. It's not road accidents, it's cancer. There was a time you hear it would be HIV. Mm -hmm. You know, the time also, the time in our history it was HIV. Now it's cancer. And so, what I do appreciate is for those people who have come out and talked about it, like Honorable Gladys Swanga mm -hmm. and, uh, and uh, Honorable Ken Okoth, yeah. who God bless his soul, also is now late. What they did is they tried to explain to people about it. people like Bob Collimo yes. who spoke about it. Because in speaking about it, mm -hmm. it allows they are the voices of those people in the Machinani yes. who don't have a voice and cannot say it. Mm -hmm. And therefore, this should be a clear wake up call. Because this the shocking part is we have I asked because I when all this was happening from the time of Bob Collimo, I asked someone and they told me, Oh, there's the National Cancer Research National Cancer Control policy yeah, yeah. and there is a national cancer institute yeah. what is it doing oh the cancer institute is underfunded the policy or oh, the policy you know we are trying to implement it because we want to build cancer centers across the country yeah. but again that is a problem with this country yeah you don't have to do something the whole nine yards uh -huh. you can start small so let's stop this thing of saying we want to build brick and mortar mm -hmm. in order to have a cancer center. Mm -hmm. A cancer center is not brick and mortar. Mm -hmm. A cancer center is the testing equipment, uh -huh. the treatment, yes. and the, in fact, in, let's forget even the treatment first. Let's go first line, mm -hmm. the diagnosis mm -hmm. by our nursing personnel. Yeah. And that's why I'm, I'm very supportive of Honorable Wanga's bill, where she's saying, let cancer detection become primary health care. Yeah. Yeah. We must make sure, and this is just a matter of training our nurses. Mm -hmm. We already have it. You know, that's what I'm saying. Let's start, let's build from what we already have. Yes. Let's, before we start constructions, because you want to give your friend a tender, yeah? Oh, yes. What we need to do is we sell ourselves. We have MTCs. Mm -hmm. Let us pick some students from the MTCs and let them focus on being trained on cancer detection at a pri very basic primary level. Yeah. And let us even get them internships. Let them go to India. Yes. Sit in a cancer place where they're treating people with cancer diagnosis. What will happen mm -hmm. is they begin to see the symptoms and study them. Because this one you can only study by practice. Eh? Yes. So it's if you're seeing only one cancer patient a day, it's very hard to know. Yeah. If most of the people come are malaria, yeah. even when the person with cancer comes, you think it's malaria. Yes. So what we need to do is immerse them. That is how you do when you want to do in intensive training at in a quick, short program. Yeah. Let us send them out there, let them go and sit there, and let our nurses first. Let's yeah. not even talk about the doctors, mm -hmm. nurses. But where, where is the political good? He was being treated for ulcers and acidity. Yeah. 
and then it turned out it was a colon cancer. But had the first primary person who met him knows if they were well versed with cancer yes. symptoms, they, and they can do it in specialization: colon mm -hmm. cancer, cervical cancer, yes. breast cancer, mm -hmm. prostate cancer, and so yeah. on. Then they would have said, "You need to go for refer him." Mm -hmm for treatment, the, I mean for testing and then treatment. thereafter you can be able to do the treatment. Yes. So let's get it from the first line uh -huh. in the normal dispensaries. Yes. You must have nurses. And then let's also focus on training yeah. the doctors because we have got a shortage of oncologists. I know a member of my family was diagnosed with cancer and let me tell you we'd be sitting at the hospital waiting for the oncologist to arrive to administer the chemotherapy. Because they are running around from Nairobi Hospital yes. to Kenyatta Hospital to Mpisha yes. to Aga Khan. And they are still teaching at the university. And they are still teaching at the university. Mm. So we must tell ourselves, we need to, and we, so because there are some specializations where we are training that we don't actually require more people. Let us focus on those specializations. Yes. Let us also even think out of the box. We have doctors that are highly trained that are in the army. Mm -hmm. We are not at war, yes. and we have not been at war, and God will bless us, we shall never have mm -hmm. war in Kenya. Yeah. Can they come out there and be used to work in the public oh, hospitals? Yes. Because we can't be having... So what we can do is the army, which has a lot of resources for training doctors, mm -hmm. we can say, we, we, you know, they, you can always put them on reserve, these are the doctors for wounds and such things. Mm -hmm. But those ones, because the government give, puts a lot of money in the army. Yeah. And therefore, the, the doctors, they are highly qualified. Oh. So why don't we say, we are now, all the guys who can enter the army, you're training in oncology. Yes. Because it's a crisis. That is the war we have in our country. Yes. Yes, we don't have war with other countries. No, we have no. war with cancer. Mm. So yes, let us, we, we, but it's, it, it will have to take drastic action, yeah. thinking outside the box yeah. and focusing on it. And looking at sometimes the simplest solutions to be able to achieve higher and higher yeah. impact. But also this has to be flipped on the people who are listening right now mm -hmm. because the WHO research shows that 70 to 80 percent of all cancer cases are diagnosed in the late stages. Yes. yes. So we take our time before we go and get checked. Screaming, we don't like screening. Everybody, yes, no, yeah. nobody wants to be, yeah. to be screened. It's very intrusive. You know, the, the thing is, and that's what we've got to do, a lot of civic awareness yes. and education, to tell people the importance of early screening. If we can be able to teach people that, so one, let's make it early screening. Mm -hmm. In fact, people who have resources and people who have insurance are not worried about. Yeah. Because those ones, they are choosing not to go yes. for the screening. They so I'm not, those are not my, my target my audience. Target. I'm not interested in those ones. I'm yeah. interested in those people who cannot afford. Yeah. That person who goes to the village dispensary and the sub-county hospital, because that is where the ordinary person goes. I want their, the diagnosis to be capable of being picked up in that level and then let us make sure that we have referral hospitals spread out which can be able to deal with it for example in Wasingishu, we have the Mold and Te Moya teaching referral hospital mm -hmm. uh, 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 Chandaria, Dr. Chandaria, Manu yeah. Chandaria mm -hmm. through the Chandaria Foundation was able to build a cancer and chronic uh, diseases center huge and he put in equipment and we thank him for that. Yes. And do you know, that is the one that serves 19 counties around wow. Wasingishu. So people are coming from as far as Vihiga, yes. people are coming from Kisumu. So the thing is, it's outstretched. Oh, yeah. They are doing the best they can. But so if we can tell ourselves, if MTRH is, is stretched, why don't we expand it so you can take in more patients yeah. and be able to do that? So that even if we say we are not able to, because also with MTRH, I find that MTRH is dealing with basic uh, treatments. People are going there for a few stitches and so on. And I've been very vocal in saying, let us decongest MTRH in Wasingishu mm -hmm. so that it can deal with the serious referral cases from the other counties as we build in those counties. Uh -huh. As I'm saying, I believe in working with what you have. Yes. Let us, let us work with what we have. So we sh it should be a concerted effort to decongest more and teaching and referral hospital in Eldoret and Wasingishu. Move the people to go to sub-county hospitals for the other disease, the normal diseases. Yeah. Then we leave this to focus on things like cancer and other chronic the illnesses that yes. require very specialized treatment. Uh -huh. Yes, but since they, we acknowledge that they are serving 19 counties. Oh, yes. And right. this, you're saying like we kicked polio out of Kenya. Yes. It became a campaign. And yes. Everybody was talking about Yes. And they got money at the yes. by yes. Kujiwa. Yeah. You know, no, and that is and that is what we should do about cancer. Yes. If we could do it for polio, yes. if we could do it for smallpox, yes. if we could do it for measles, measles yeah. we could do it for now it's a hepatitis Even B. Malaria yeah. Malaria. But you know what? Yeah. Let me tell you something. What is happening yeah. is that 
sometimes, and this is, uh, I don't know if you read a lot of books like me, mm-hmm. and documentaries, <laughs> yeah. there is also some talk about, they sometimes it's conspiracies by the drug companies. Ah. You get? Mm-hmm. So you find that the, the, the drug companies mm-hmm. that are teach, treating stage 4 cancer, they know you're going to die, yeah. the hospitals are going to keep you in the ICU forever and make the so much money, may not busy. necessarily be interested. Yeah. If you look at the measles vaccine, the smallpox vaccine and all, it was not only driven by governments, it was also driven by the companies manufacturing that vaccine because uh-huh. they want to sell it. Yeah. So yes, the industry yeah. has got something to do with it also, and that's the reality. Wow. Right. Yes. So we must now mm-hmm. begin the government must go to the, the, the companies the, and then look at the companies that have the equipment that detects cancer early. Yeah. Those are the ones we should be working with. But not, not try and start working with the ones that are, are dealing with it at the stage okay. four. Oh, yeah. Because then they will not be interested <laughs> in helping us at the early no. stage. You know, you've got to understand the politics <laughs> yes. of medicine and uh, business. And, and there's so a lot of money out there. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. If you look, yeah. another issue that is very important. Yeah. Uh, food safety. <laughs> yeah. We know for a fact from ah. research that has been confirmed across the world yes. in the top international journals and research institutions yes. that something like Roundup has been confirmed as causing cancer. We know that certain pesticides that we're using in Kenya causes cancer. First of all, Roundup is in our shelves using a different name. Wow. They the the name, Pesticides the Control Board is doing nothing about it. So some people need to be fired. Yeah, of course. Because when I've spoken to some of them, they tell me, you know, we don't have enough resources. Then talk about it. You may not have the money. Like, I don't have the money to do something about it. <laughs> yes. You know, I can't build a cancer center, but I can talk, talk about, about it. it. And, and I'm pushing for the food safety bill yes. through Parliament, mm-hmm. where we are saying there are certain pesticides that we must remove oh, from yes. our shelves. Yeah. So someone told me, no, this pesticide is safe, but you know, they are safe, but you know it's uh, it's okay. It can be used as long as somebody wears protective gear and gloves. And I don't know what. So I asked them, which world do you live in? Have you seen a village person spraying their crop wearing protective clothing? They First, they can't afford the protective yes. clothing. Yes. Then they mm-hmm. tell you, oh no, you see, after spraying, you should wait seven days yeah. before you you sell it to the market. I tell them. When that person is so desperate to yes. go and pay school fees, they just need those tomatoes on the market right away. Yeah. Never mind the seven days I'm supposed How to wait. School fees, chakula. Yes, yes, chakula. So we must realize that if that is the case, then even if it even if it's ordinarily safe if properly used, get it out of the shelves. That's what I believe. I'm no. radical about it. Yeah. And who said what is wrong if we eat a shriveled tomato? What is wrong? What is wrong? Yes. I always tell people, I, when I look at my vegetable, if it has uh, doo-doo holes, that's I like that's a good vegetable because yeah. the doo-doo knows what it's doing. Eh? Yeah. It won't eat something that's poisonous. <laughs> so if you find one that is clean and polished, Safi. you should be very worried. That's should what be very we have here. Right? Yes, so I'll be, I'll be coming to this show yeah. and pu- pushing the food safety bill okay. because we need to do something drastic. So it's multi-pronged. Okay. Because we don't know uh, what, exa- we can't say we know for a fact the actual cause, yeah. but already from research we have pointers. Yeah. We know it's food. We know about early detection. So why don't we focus on those ones that what we know? Really yes. Yes. What yeah. we already know. You know, work, work with what you have. Yes. Yeah. So don't tell me about building at brick and mortar. That is, what even in this room, yeah. I can have a cancer machine. Yeah. And then I'm That's saying, why is the government that. wanting to build? Yeah. You know, you can go to the private sector. Yeah enter into a proper agreement with them and say I'll buy it or pay it over time because people have empty buildings mm-hmm. that they can't lease. Mm-hmm. So you tell them, why don't you work with you? Instead of, let me use your building as the hospital instead of yeah, building, another one. building another one. Right. Catch Jeff Koinange and Professor Hamel every day, Monday to Friday from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. only on Hot 96.